All right. How y'all doing? Can you let me know if the uh, the music is too loud? Hey, Daft Taff, how's it going? So yeah, I wanted to uh, pick up where we left off last weekend. Hey, Tooch TV, TV, how's it going? Basically, just wanted to look at the same malware variant that we unpacked dynamically, um, or well, statically and dynamically, because they have like an RC4 algorithm um, that they were using with a number of direct syscalls, and then they were rebuilding a import table for the unpack sample dynamically, et cetera. So um, just to kind of go over what we did uh, last stream, um, we're looking at this DLL that I had unpacked using some automation that I had written for a packer that was being used with CACBOT. And when we wrote that automation, we unpacked this DLL, which had uh, a different execution chain than the CACBOT samples that we observed. Um, and what we did observe is that it's doing direct syscalls. So for example, uh, if we look at, there's this dynamic syscall resolution. Uh, this particular one is resolving the syscall for ZW allocate virtual memory, I believe. And uh, this is just performing a memory allocation for some shell code that um, eventually, oh yeah, if I do F5 here, it should come up here. Yeah, there we go. ZW allocate virtual memory. And then uh, this is do, being done to allocate a virtual memory segment for um, this shell code that is eventually called. Uh, so if I make some more room here, um, we should be able to see where this is called. Um, so in DLL entry point, I don't know why, but the decompiler wasn't showing this properly before. Um, but if we scroll down here, then we can see that um, this eventually jumps to more code. Um, and we basically looked for uh, the shellcode segment that it was executing down here. Um, and this ends up doing a whole bunch of um, dynamic execution in memory with position independent code. So that's kind of the gist of it. Um, we re-implemented the hashing algorithm in this sample using the he new headless API in IDA 9.0, so the IDA lib. And then that IDA lib code was generating the hashes we needed for NTDLL in order to resolve the hashed imports that were being hashed with this hashing algorithm. Um, and then basically we marked up the resulting shellcode, position independent shellcode that was being executed that I have in a separate IDB. And then we basically got to the point where this was decrypting a, another PE using RC4, uh, which is very common. And then the resulting portable executable that was decrypted using this RC4 algorithm actually did not have an MZ header. So the first time that we went through this RC4 decryption routine, I didn't notice that it was indeed a full PE that was just missing the MZ header. Um, but then this code that's called after the RC4 decryption effectively gets the size of the image optional header. So I just marked this up before um, our stream here. Um, this is actually not NTDLL, this is the decrypted DLL pointer. And then uh, this basically resolves the size of the image using the image optional header within the PE header, even though it doesn't have an MZ header, uh, it allocates that using ZW allocate virtual memory. And then um, it basically goes through all the sections and then dynamically maps those sections into memory. Um, in addition to resolving a kernel 32 function table and a msvcrt yeah msvcrt function table here so this is where it does that dynamic uh, function resolution 
um, and it loads them all to memory using load library X, and then um, it walks each uh, respective uh, function and calls get proc address for, I believe it's the uh, functions within the um, the portal executable. So this would be the uh, import directory for the portable executable that was decrypted memory. Um, it was in walking the import directory for that and then resolving the functions that required dynamically. Um, obviously all these offsets are not marked up perfectly, um, but since we spent a lot of time on these portable executable offsets, I thought we could just uh, move on to the next executable that is being decrypted using RC4 um, and seeing if we can unpack it or seeing if we can dump the unpacked mapped version from memory and then seeing if we can get a cleaner dump than the one I took last stream, which was um, a hacked up uh, MZ header. Um, the other thing that I did not find last stream was um, there's a call here to the address of entry point. It's kind of hard to find because, uh, yeah, right here. So there's uh, this fast call to the address of entry point. Um, and then this is just the, ret the return value of the address of entry point call. So basically this is our OEP that's being called right here. Um, so this is just gonna be the return value uh, and not the uh, actual pointer itself because this is an actual call, I believe. Um, okay. So yeah, so we can take a look at that uh, OEP call. Let's see. Where's the actual call being done though? Like it's casting into a fast call in the decompilation, but I just want to make sure that that is actually correct. Uh, there's call to NW allocate. Anyways, we can dynamically analyze this and uh, make sure that's actually what it's doing. Um, oh yeah, because it's mapping it here. So it wouldn't make sense that it was doing the actual OEP call there, but yeah, we can check it out. Um, so yeah, hopefully that sounds okay. So I'm just gonna go back to our dynamic analysis VM here. Uh, this is not what we want. Uh, this guy here. And I'll probably just, uh, so I had a, re I had a snapshot that was basically um, while we were walking the, the shell code here. So I'm just gonna restore that snapshot uh, using x64 debug for this dynamic analysis. And uh, we can take a look here. Okay, so let's see where we were in our static analysis window. So again, this is the uh, position independent shell code. So I'm just gonna copy this address. I don't know why this is uh, not defined here, but let me mark up this code. I guess we can just jump to the relevant section. Um, so, okay, so we have Let's just use this address and go there. And then we should have the uh, start of our decrypted portable executable here. Yeah, so <clears throat> so this is what I was talking about last stream where we had um, these byte signatures, or this is probably a byte signature that was being looked for, um, but this is the start of the MZ header, but it's obviously not a valid MZ header. And then we have um, the portable executable header oh, actually might be up higher, but yeah, so this is the uh, the start of the PE header and the decrypted and the RC4 decrypted one. And then we can see we have uh, section names, et cetera. So um, basically we want to let this shell code map this PE into memory. And then I want to see if I can get a cleaner dump than, uh, so I basically last stream, I statically dumped it to disk and then um, fixed up the MZ header, but um, but it wasn't a very clean dump. So I just wanted to do it this way to see if we could get a better dump. So let's uh, see where we want to break here. Hey, Goose Goof, how's it going? All right, so we have um, our syscall here. What do you mean by statically dump to disk? What would dynamically dumping be? So, oh yeah, sorry, that's that wasn't very clear. So statically dumping would literally just be like me. So like, we have this currently unmapped portable executable in this decrypted RC4 buffer or the RC4 decrypted buffer. 
So if I, so these windows are being a pain. I just want to make this bigger. But um, so say I like dumped this uh, entire memory region to disk, which, which is what I did last stream um, from this offset and then just replaced the invalid MZ bytes with um, valid ones. Uh, so let me see if I can do that again. I got the correct length last stream just because I did it from the the RC40 cryptid area, but let's uh, copy these bytes. But effectively it's um, saved to file. I did this with the dump command last stream, so that was probably the better way. But basically I just dumped um, these decrypted PE bytes to disk and then fixed up the header. So I guess it's not really static because, uh, um, but basically it's an unmapped portable executable that was RC4 decrypted. And then I was dumping it to disk um, from X64 debug and then modifying the header. Uh, whereas now I'm going to let the shellcode dynamically map the portable executable into memory. And then I'm gonna try and dump it using Scylla, if that makes sense, uh, get a white booty. Uh, just manually arbitrary slice of data, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so let's, uh, I just wanna show you what I did last stream. So let's just do dump. I don't know if that'll work well, but let's see. Oh, that did work really well, actually. But I don't know if these are valid bytes. Let me just open another portable executable to see if it's similar. So like this DLL loader, or like our second stage DLL. So let's see, PE is at D0. Okay, so maybe I'm wrong. 0E1F. Okay, let me just try replacing these bytes and then see if, because uh, it doesn't have the P or the MZ signature either. But the LFA new offset into the um, NT headers needs to be valid, so. Let me just make sure. We could probably just do uh, this way to start and then uh, see if it see if it works. Because I think these first few offsets don't matter, but these offsets do matter. Because one of them is going to be the e LFA new. Um, okay, let me just do like the first few bytes. Probably not going to be valid, but that's okay. And I'm just going to try opening with Ida. Uh, so we just want dump dot dump. Okay, so that was actually cleaner than uh, the one that I got last stream. So that might have just been all we needed to do. So maybe um, I will just use this one. Um, OHXD, a recovering challenge, summon and flare on. <laughs> no, dead like you. Uh, this is a real world piece of malware. Um, I didn't do flare on just because I didn't have time. I was like trying to do a whole bunch of stuff for invoke RE uh, during the past few months, unfortunately, but. Let me copy this to my host so we can open it with my commercial version of Ida. Okay, so here's the uh, next stage. That was RC4 decrypted. Um, we'll figure out how to kind of automate that later, hopefully. Uh, like those steps that I did dynamically last stream because uh, doing things statically is more fun. But it was just like a, lot, a giant pain because the, um, because the offsets were, like everything being passed around to that shellcode was dynamic, so. All right, let's see here. Okay, so we have a call to free console. I don't think that does anything. But then we already have some um, interesting offsets being passed around here. H inst DLL. Okay, so this is walking uh, DLL header. I don't know where it got this H inst uh, DLL from, but it's probably a call down here or a call on one of these um, function calls here or maybe from free console. Let me just double check with free console this, but I don't think it's important. Detaches calling process from its console. Yeah, it's not important. Okay, so let's see what this is. This keyword, bunch of keywords. Okay, so we have, this is our uh, global keyword as the first argument. And then uh, I think this is just a mem copy. Or no, it's being initialized to this keyword buffer is being initialized to um, whatever A2 is, and it's zero in this in instance for the length of 240. So this is like mem, um, let's call it mem init zero. 
it would be like a mem set, I guess. MW mem set. It's probably called a bunch of times elsewhere, yeah. And then we have these keywords that are initialized globally. And it looks like we have a bunch more hashing. So let's uh, resolve these hashes. So hopefully these are in HashDB. That'd be really nice. Is HashDB not working? Oh, I think I need to execute it from my requests. Okay, so yeah, I just need to reopen this I instance. Sorry, one sec. It's kind of annoying because I have like requests in a virtual environment. It's like a whole thing. Um, and that's needed by um, HashDB. How'd you do on the um, on the flare on challenges, uh, dead like you? Okay, hopefully that worked. Let's see. Yeah, hash db. Okay. All right, let's see. Easy button, maybe. Oh, we can't parse it. Yeah, I need to um, do a PR and fix that. It looks like it might be an I to nine issue or something with these long long values. All right, so it's the same hashing algorithm that we saw in the shell code. Okay, so that's set now. And now if we do a hash lookup, I have to do it from here again. All right, so there's gonna be NTDLL functions. So I'm just gonna mark up this these globals real quick. So I wonder if this is a BRC4. I've never reversed BRC4 before, so very curious what this is. Sorry, this is gonna be boring because I have to mark up all these pointers, but once we have the resolved function pointers, it'll be a lot nicer. NT unmap view section. I wonder if this is, there's a lot of good stuff like MD5 in it. So it's doing some MD5 hashing for some reason. So just to uh, kind of explain what I was doing as well. Um, basically I used uh, this tool HashDB and prob, good levels, thanks. Um, which is from OA Labs. And it's basically like a hash database that I can use to look up um, uh, hashes associated with common strings that are used in malware. Um, and in this case, it's using this hashing algorithm that I'll show you real quick. Um, so this is going to be walking the um, export directory of given DLLs for given functions and then hashing them using uh, this hashing algorithm. So I'm just going to call this MW hash um, uh, BRC4. And then, so I'm just going to mark up. So the, and then uh, basically the malware is resolving each of these imports dynamically in memory. And then it's setting each resolved import to um, these global variables. And then these globals, so for example, like get deal handle X is being called uh, later on in the malware. So hopefully that makes sense. So all I'm doing right now is I've resolved the imports for NTDLL using the HashDB plugin. And then each respective hash, I'm marking up hitting the M key because I've imported, um, oh yeah, I guess no, I can do uh, what, um, I can do what printup mentioned last stream, which is uh, make this the, I can, I can, I don't know if I won't, I won't be able to mark up the pointers, but I'll be able to, um, mark up each of these hashes respectively. Um, would you automate this task? I was looking at a Dar Steeler sample and had a similar function. Yeah, so I don't really know how to automate this. Hey, what's up, ill friends, by the way. Um, I don't really know how to automate this in the IDA hex rays uh, view, but I was trying to automate this because um, we had a similar hash lookup function or a bunch of them for, um, Havoc. So I don't know if you saw any of the Havoc streams, but I would really like to automate this because it's a giant pain. But uh, so if I do Y, so I can actually set the argument. So this integer argument to our resolved structure here. So if I, so this is like all of the resolved hashes for NTDLL that HashDB gave us. So uh, printup showed me this last stream. Um, but if I set this enum as the argument to that function call, um, sorry, as the type, I know you guys can't see this, it's really tiny, but I'm just setting um, that enum as the type for this function call. Then I see how it just resolved all those functions, which is pretty sick. 
So that's way faster than me individually looking them or than me individually labeling, uh, labeling those enums. But then um, I still have to mark up each of the, the keywords. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, so this is probably the NCDLL base address. And then um, this is probably resolving DLL. So this is probably gonna be called elsewhere unless it's just using NCDLL functions. Um, See, so yeah, I'm just going to finish marking up these pointers. Sorry, I know it's boring, but it'll be really nice once we have all the pointers. And these Intel functions or these NTDL functions should be pretty interesting to see how they're being used because they're really low level. But yeah, I know um, there's also some functionality to do hash table resolution, but I think it would be different than this. Um, anyways, I'll just do this real quick. How was uh, reversing the rest of Vidar? El Franz, was it hard? Once you got those hashes resolved? Man, this hash table is big. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, I just hope this isn't CACBOT because uh, I already reversed it. Oh, cool, nice. I picked it up just for the sake of learning Ghidra script C2. Um, C2 was kind of a pain, in, or in plain sight, nice. How was the Gija scripting? Were you using Java or were you using uh, the Python, the Jython stuff, or a different project? I don't know why this, there's two pointers pointing the same hash, but. Oh, is this resolving the, oh yeah, cool. So it's doing the same uh, syscall resolution as the unpacker. So yeah, I don't, I'm pretty sure this isn't CACBOT then. So this does uh, MW syscall resolve. So that's cool. It's not just the um, try Java first. Let's get Gija set up. Yeah, cool, nice. How was the, like, I've seen Gija scripting with Java and it was pretty clean. So um, I used to, like, in university, I used to write Java, but I haven't really written Java since then. So it would probably be a, a little bit of a learning curve for me, but I'd probably just rather write it in Java because it's, um, that's the like native library interface. I know a lot of people complain about the Jython stuff, so it'd be just be easier to write in Java. But I guess I don't write um, Ida automation in C++, which is what I probably should be doing, so. There's so many functions. Sorry, I guess I could have done this uh, before stream, but that's all right. Has anybody seen um, Malware that uses direct syscalls before in the wild. Uh, we've been just, yeah, that's a good question, actually. I should try it. <laughs> I can probably try that later. Um, I was just trying to like only use Ida for the stream because I was using it last stream. So I can have like all the IDBs for this malware. Plus, I noticed. Um, Last stream I was getting, uh, or I was like really rusty with Ida because I've just been using Binja for like a few months. So, Prince up was helping me though. Sorry, almost done here. NT read virtual memory, it was doing like everything. NT open file, read file. Does somebody want to Google and see if uh, BRC4 does direct syscalls? BRC4 is um, this project, Retel. While I finish this. All right, pretty much done here. All right. So let's uh, see what this stuff does. So we have all these different functions now that are resolved. Um, let's see what these are we're missing here. Uh, more hashes. <laughs> okay. Um, I do actually wonder if this is just havoc. Sixty-four uh, bit. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Oh no, havoc wasn't using direct syscalls. So let's check out this blog. Most payload BRC four, BRC four. Okay, so we could probably look for uh, some of these capabilities and some of this stuff. Cool, okay. 
yeah, we should be able to figure it out if it is uh, indeed, or wait, that might be part of the loading process. Um, X64 shellcode, stack of eight bytes at a time. Okay, that looks like a little bit different than what we saw. Uh, syscall everything. <laughs> Resolves system call index from, yeah, the SSDT. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, using API hashing, rotate write 13. All API calls are made via API hash lookups. Um, 3,000 bytes of memory. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we saw. Copies shell code that was pushed on the stack to the previous. I don't know if we saw NT create thread X, but okay. If we, yeah, if we do see the BRC config, then um, that'll probably be a good tell as well. So um, yeah, let's, let's keep reversing this. Let's see where, um, so there's going to be more, like there's so many calls to BRC for here, but, or the hash resolution function. <clears throat> What's this V3? More RC4. Okay, so it's using RC4 for string decryption, I think. At least for these strings. Uh, maybe just for the function resolution. So I'm guessing there's probably that many uh, DLLs, which is awful. <laughs> V4, 0.3. Yeah, I think we're gonna need to figure out these uh, these hashes which we can do, but I just kind of want to look around before you guys just watch me do um, more f hash table resolution by hand. MW resolve and TDLL. Loader register notification. What does this do? Let's see, uh, do while, I'm not sure what that function does. I just want to see what this function does. Registers notification when a, a, a DLL is first loaded. Okay, that makes sense. And then this is probably doing um, more DLL loading from a list is my guess and more hashing, except this is probably, let's see what DLL this is. Maybe we can, um, instead of just me marking up all these tables, I can just go through the, the sample and then see the pointers or resolve the pointers as I need them. But um, let me do the same thing I did before. So I'm just gonna do a, a hash db hunt for the algorithm. Okay, yeah, let me see what uh, these are for. So hunt, oh, I, should, I could have just done a lookup. I didn't need to do a full hunt because we already had this. Okay, kernel 32. All right, so then we can do that again. Yeah, there's a lot of functions. So let me import this one. I'm pretty sure this is just kernel 32. Okay, I'm just gonna assume that's kernel 32. And this is probably a different one. Let's see what this guy is. Set valid call targets. Set process valid call targets. Um, what GLL are these in? Oh, these are in kernel 32, okay. So let's just call this like resolve more kernel 32. MW resolve functions. Okay, let's see what this one is. Okay, set process valid call targets. I don't know what like these NTDL functions are gonna be annoying because I don't usually uh, <laughs> see a bunch of uh, NTDL functions. Provides the con control flow guard uh, with a list of valid indirect call targets, specifies whether it should be marked valid or not. Okay. Um, so virtual address, so we're going to have the handle, which is negative one. I should probably, um, make this a struct if I can, um, but this will be the, uh, region size and then loader disable thread callouts for DLL. I don't really know what all this stuff is for, but disable thread attach and detach callouts to a DLL. Okay, maybe anti-debug stuff. Thread attach and detach. Low level window stuff is pretty crazy. All right, let's see here. So we got um, more DLL resolution. 
in load order module list. Uh, so it's probably just resolving a given DLL, I presume. Uh, so this will be the um, loader loader data table entry again. So DLL base address, and then it's just getting uh, the entry point. So NW get of a given DLL. I'm not exactly sure which DLL this is. Probably this one. It's being executed. And then we have uh, NT create event which does what? We get an event handle, creates an event object to initialize the state of the, of the event uh, with the specified value, opens a handle to the object. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what that's for, but an event object. It's just synchronization. Set event function. Event object is useful for signaling a thread indicating a particular event has occurred. Okay, so let's just say it's, um, setting up thread signaling, and then uh, this global is probably like some sort of event. This is called like G event. Um, not sure what this is doing, but this jumps to a given argument. This might just be some like indirect call stuff for um, anti create event. Let's just do that for now. Actually, maybe I'll mark up the uh, jump stuff. Again, not exactly sure what that's for, but we can probably worry about that later. All right. Um, I think these are, I think this is just looking for the uh, syscall stuff again. Let me take a look at the other syscall function to see if it's similar. Um, what did I call the other one? Syscall resolve. Uh, no, this looks different. Okay. So let's, uh, let's not worry about that for now. I'm sure it has to do with like threading. All right, yeah, let's make some more real estate here. And then um, MW get deal entry points. See what this is doing. Okay, so it's creating a thread, probably. Um, I think this is just calling it indirectly again. But then it calls it here, so I'm not entirely sure what these uh, are for. It looks like it's some config item, so how y'all doing? I think this NTDL stuff is gonna be um, slower for me just cause it's, I'm not used to it. I should probably figure out um, how to uh, get the arguments for each of these calls cause that'd be super helpful. I know there's that Mandiant project for, um, for getting them. Uh, NT alert resume thread. So basically I'm just assuming that, um, base, like this, what this looks like to me is it's getting uh, if there's a global boolean, which is probably a part of the BRC4 config, it just calls the resolved function directly. But then if, if it has the syscall everywhere, um, uh, everywhere configuration, like in this blog, then, um, then it's doing the, uh, dynamic syscall resolution. So let me go back here. I don't know what this call is doing. Um, let's see. It's one of our dynamically resolved ones, I'm sure. So wait for single object and then NT close. Okay. So that's our main function. Um, it looks like it's initializing a resource in the, in a thread and then it's calling uh, this with QAPC thread. And this is probably our main function here. Um, uh, oh, that's cool. Thanks, Leon. Um, Software Engineering Network as a mentor. Yeah, I can definitely apply for that. Does anybody have any questions as to what I'm doing? Just, uh, just chilling. Okay, so this is more function resolution. And this is for another DLL, so let's do that. Okay, uh, IPHL API. Okay, and then these should resolve automatically now. Okay, and then MW resolve IPLH API DLL. And this one's gonna be a different DLL, Crypt32. Okay, so this is um, Crypt DLL. And then 
WS232. <clears throat> so it'd be. And then advanced API 32 DLL. Okay. Okay. All right. And then, sorry, just pulling up chat and make sure I don't miss anything. Okay. And then we have this struct with various offsets. So I assume, um, I think it said in that blog post, the config was RC4 decrypted. Cause I'd kind of be curious. Um, how this is decrypted, but do we have any um, base 64 blocks in here? So there's a lot of functions. So there's probably like our main here. And then this is like some set of configuration parameters that are passed in the first argument. So let's uh, create a new struct type. Um, I don't know why I gave us such a bad struct. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, let, maybe let's just make, um, okay, now let's try, there we go. So I just kind of weird in that, like, sometimes if you want to do that, um, create new struct right click menu thing, um, and it's giving you weird results. If you reset the pointer type, so if you right click, go to reset pointer type, I know this is really tiny for you guys and then right click again and then do, um, create new struct type, then it'll create like a much cleaner, uh, structure. So that's all I did there. Um, Okay, so now that I've uh, created this keyword structure, <clears throat> I should probably figure out what is initializing this. So that was passed in the first argument. So let's call this MW main. And uh, let's see, this would be the H insta DLL. So how does um, NTQ ABC thread work? Let's see, so ABC routine. So open a handle such a thread object entry point to user APC routine. But how are arguments passed to a given thread? It's used to execute code for a different thread. This function is commonly used as part of process injection. System argument one, um, optional. So I think it's the third argument. So this thing. So let's set it as our uh, new struct that we just created. So I just copied the struct name and then I'm just going to apply this um, instead of this h inst instance thing because that's wrong. So let's reset the pointer type again. And then I'm going to set it to our struct, uh, convert to pointer type. And then um, let's just call this config structure or something. Maybe. Why didn't that work? And then we're going to need to figure out um, these members now. So this will be the event, probably. And then DL entry point. So let's see where all the places this is used. The virtual address. Maybe I can uh, look at this dynamically to figure out what it's calling here. Or to figure out what it's walking here. Because this is going to be um, image optional header 64. I thought it would be anyways. Size of headers. Plus four nine four zero nine five. Okay, where is this keyword set? I thought it was set here. Keyword is equal to zero. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'll just um, move on from this config struct uh, to see if what what the values are used for within that main function. Okay, so we'll do heap. I'll just do g heap. Um, this environment block keyword where is this used it's past this function so s ran seed okay so this is probably uh, doing some calm stuff just based on these characters um, all right I think I'm gonna go uh, run to the washroom just because I drank a lot of coffee um, so I'll be back in two seconds uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to throw up a quick ad for um, our course. So the reason we can actually uh, afford Ida 9 and to do all this stuff um, is because of this training stuff. So I'm just going to uh, throw that up before um, I run out. So I'll be right back. Hey everyone, my name is Joshua Reynolds and welcome to the Invoke RE Introduction to Malware Binary Triage course. Throughout this course, you will learn to triage and reverse engineer malware binaries using a number of proven techniques. 
These include static analysis, which is the concept of analyzing malware at rest, and dynamic analysis, which is the concept of analyzing malware as it executes. We will also be analyzing network protocols used in malware command and control communications, malware obfuscation, packers and how to unpack them, process injection, how to write effective YAR rules to detect malware variants, and how to compare malware samples at a binary level. This course consists of 11 modules, each containing lectures and practical labs to apply knowledge that you have gained as you complete the course. We provide both video and written materials, so no matter what your learning style is, you can complete the course successfully. Thank you for checking out the course, and we look forward to teaching you. See, so yeah, I think this is doing some calm stuff. Maybe um, instead of marking up this entire database, um, this is pretty cool. It's like a string table, it looks like. But yeah, instead of marking up this entire database contiguously, I could probably look for that config if that's uh, more interesting. What do you What do you guys think? So just because the, sorry, I'm eating some leftover Halloween candy. See how it says like a root CMV2? Or no, sorry, this might be WMI.com. So if I take this, for example, and then uh, resolve the string. Um, so we can just do like, or you can even do this with uh, Vim actually. Then just sub out all the quotes and uh, commas, and then all the quotes. And then the uh, that L was from that long, so. <clears throat> So I think these are those weren't in order actually. Did I mess that up? No, rot. CMB2. Just trying to figure out how this function works. Um so copy word bytes. Uh I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna figure out why that um string is hard to obfuscate than I thought, but uh let's call this uh this looks like a mem copy. Call um, RTL size heap. So this just looks like a uh, mem copy uh, expand heap. Yeah, it's called like everywhere. So it makes sense. <clears throat> Where were we though? There we go. So um, I don't know what's, why it's only ROT. Let's look. Let's look at the disassembly because it should be root. Uh, CMV2, but, um, oh yeah, so good, sauce boy. Uh, so yeah, that's what I was gonna show you. Um, CMV2, uh, so CIMV2 rather. Um, so this is a namespace for WMI and WMI is a, um, I don't know what you would define it as being it's definitely an interface for interacting with Windows, and you can use it to query like a whole bunch of different types of information um, on Microsoft Windows. I believe it's a like I believe it uses COM, so um, that's kind of what I meant. Uh, so Windows Management Instrumentation—that's what it stands for. Um, Web-based enterprise management (WBEM) which is an industry initiative to develop a standard technology for accessing management information in an enterprise environment. Uh, it uses a common information model, uh, standard represents systems, applications, network devices, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, basically it's a management interface for Microsoft Windows. Oh, do you think it's a WMI by bypass? Thrackery? But yeah, maybe we can write some automation to recover these strings. Oh no, it just reminded me of it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, I haven't done any WMI stuff in a while. The last time I looked at it was because um, some malware was using it to bypass the sandbox. Uh, so they use, they like, you can like query the system temperature and stuff with WMI. So it's a really good way to bypass sandboxes because like, I think usually the system temperature isn't set in like Kimu and stuff like that. So uh, this should be a query. So, okay, let me create a struct out of this. Or is this just a char array? Um, I think this is just a char array, but resolving this 
This is going to be a pain. Because these are non-contiguous. Yeah, let me give this some thought. Okay. Um, what I think we can probably do here is create a struct of this size. But I just don't know why it's missing a character up here. This was kind of tripped me out. Um, like this ROT. Maybe it's because of the disassembly. Because it should be um, R-O-O-T. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, here, let me get this function. Oh, create mutex. Oh, okay, never mind. This is just creating a mutex, I think. Um, this is probably why I should have marked up all those functions before, but, but why does it have uh, only zero values being passed? RCX, REX, R8. Let me double check that it's create mutex. Yeah, it definitely is. What happens when you call create mutex with zeros only, with nulls only? Optional, optional. Okay, so I guess um, that wouldn't fail. So, okay, so this creates that string, this string. Okay, let's just say like, that'd be my string. And then, um, yeah, what I mentioned before is I wanted to check out that, uh, or see if we could find the config. So let me do that. So uh, if it's just like one big base64 string, we could probably find it pretty easily. Um, so let's check out the data section. It might not be that simple anymore, but. So let's see, this data is passed to what? A bunch of stuff. Okay, let me keep looking. Yeah, all these strings are, uh, but these might actually not be strings because there's um, invalid ASCII bytes, but uh, they're definitely RC4 decrypting these. So why don't I do um, some RC4 stuff with each of these strings so we can recover them. Or are these just all the DLLs? I think these might just be the DLLs. Yeah, we don't really need to worry about the DLL names, but I'll just show you like what I would do. Um, so we can copy out these bytes uh, and then just for the sake of uh, simplicity. Um, so if I just hit uh, shift E, then we can just export the bytes as um, hexadecimal. And uh, what's the purpose of the nameless mutex? Yeah, that's, I'm not sure. Ill friends, it's quite confusing. <laughs> to be honest, I've never seen that. Um, and if we see Cyberchef, uh, we can just decrypt these really easily. So like, uh, if I do from hex with that ciphertext, and then we see the passphrase. So uh, if we look at this RC4 decryption algorithm, then we're gonna have our ciphertext. Um, okay, so for the RC4 decryption, we have the ciphertext that's copied uh, using QMEM copy. And if we look at the RC4 decryption loop, we just have this static, um, that I believe is uh, solely ASCII. So if we look at um, our disassembly here, we just have like two string segments, but then the decompiler uh, puts it back into one string. So let me do this as a string. And then we'll make that the passphrase um, in Latin one. Okay, that didn't work. So we might have to do um, some finagling input format. We don't actually need this. RC4, and input format hex. Okay, let me let me see if I can get the proper key. So we'll do these bytes, these bytes. Okay, there may be more to the key than just that. Um, let's see, doesn't look like it. Plus I, let's see. Um, I know I might, I might have gotten the uh, ordering wrong. So we'll do this. Yeah, it could be. I think uh, Ida's uh, accommodating for the null byte, or sorry, not the null byte, the endingness. Is it getting the length? 256 initialization, 16 bytes. So this will be advanced API 32.dll, so we know that. Okay, so let's just do get bytes on this, since I uh, apparently can't understand the endingness. 
unless they modify the um, RC4 algorithm, but I doubt it. So I'm just doing get bytes in a uh, little Python here. And then um, uh, we'll write some automation to just decrypt all of these. Once I confirm, that's how it's working. Because automation is better than just this. Um, see if I like remove those null bytes. Oh, that was it. <laughs> Thanks, Daft Taff. Um, yeah, I think before I was getting the ending in a strong for the, for the key. So this is our key. And then we're going to get every xref to, okay, so let's write some automation. So key, that's our key. And then um, I'm just going to grab RC4 for this Python space that I'm using right now. So, so then let's do, uh, I think it's arc4. Yeah. Okay. And then Back to our Ida space, we can do for ref in, is it still um, xref? Let me do, uh, hold on, I can't remember my Ida scripting anymore. I've been doing binja. Is it you, Ida utils? Thanks. Ida utils dot uh, get, where's it xref? Yeah, uh, Zohan 300, how's it going? So xrefs two are RC4 function, is that it for the uh, arguments? Yep, it would help if I put a leading zero. And then a uh, two, I can't remember the, okay, I'll just do this if um, ref dot from two, code refs two. Okay, so two, and then we'll do, we're gonna need to get the previous head, but is it gonna be, is this gonna be a giant headache? Probably, because are they all QMEM copies? They're not. Uh, they might be. Okay, it might not be too bad. <laughs> Except that one's not. All right, we can just handle the uh, non-QMEM copy ones as they come, because they're probably gonna be these registers from the disassembly. Because the um, there's instances where the RC4 decrypted strings are in registers there's instances where their memory addresses um like it would be easier from the decompilation but walking the decompilation tree um like i did last time on like previous streams was pretty brutal i could do this really fast with binja but um should we just do that what do you guys think binja to the rescue but where did they put uh, get next head and get previous head in Ida9? Can I just call it from here? All right. All right, so our decryption function was where? Here. All right, let's see how fast we can do this in here. So we can do, um, let's see what these look like in Binja. Some of them are like nested. All right, this looks a lot better. Some of them are still registers, but we should be able to handle that case. Hey, Zoan. Uh, yeah, it's uh, BRC4. So it's like this C2 framework thing. Um, this was being dropped by like a packer um, that I looked at for CACBOT. All right. And then we'll do, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure oh, it's pretty popular. So a lot of people have seen it. Okay, call sites for call site. Um, call site dot HLI, I think. All right, let's do uh, HL call, and then we're gonna want the uh, parameters, and then the second parameter uh, to get the length. I thought it was just const, right? Constant. Okay. Okay. So, uh, do you want to save? Yes. So HLIL params one, and then. This will be the length, or CT length. Um, and then uh, the getting the ciphertext for each one of these is gonna be kind of annoying, but just a, so like in this example, um, we don't even have ciphertext, I don't think, unless it's from this R12 thing. So like this is probably being uh, passed in an argument. <clears throat> but if we like look at the other examples, 
like this this is a built-in mem copy nested into this uh hlil call um and then this has the ciphertext here so uh, we can easily get it so we'll just say like um current l instruction uh params one or zero and then so we could just say like uh ct location is equal to hl call param zero and then uh bb dot read or then we'll say like if uh the hl call or is instance hl call um high level il call so if it's a nested call then uh, let's get the tokens of that call. Um, and then if the first token is equal to built-in mem copy, then, um, then we're gonna copy out the uh, data location and the length from there. So if we do like, um, let's just say print uh, found mem copy and nested call. Okay, so we're not hitting the if statement. So let's do a print HL call. Okay, so we have all of our RC4 decryption calls. Um, a large amount of them are just referencing the mem copies. So we'll handle that first. Um, but why is the, uh, let's print the type of call. It's a high level IL call, but the of uh, CT lock. So it'll be a const pointer. So all I'm trying to do right now is um, get the ciphertext from our uh, call here, ct lock. There's um, there's faster ways to do this with the binge API. Like I could just use um, Psychic, but I kind of just want to do this manually to show you kind of a workflow that you could do without having fancy AI tools, um, if that makes sense. Okay, let's try that. Hello, I'll call is the, the type that we want. And I'll get rid of these. And then, uh, okay, so now that we have those, we wanna do, get the actual data, um, which is from the second argument to the address. Uh, but we'll get the tokens. I don't know why the token match isn't working. I guess we don't really need the token match right now. Oh yeah, nice, thanks for the spot. Yeah, that's why. That should be why. Yeah, it's still not matching. Let me see. Let me see. Um, so we have zero. Yeah, I don't know why that's not working. Token zero. Let's just do built in mem copy in. Not iterable. That's why. Because we need the uh, text, I think. There we go. Okay, now that we have the mem copy. Let's print it out again. And then we need the uh, second argument. So we need um, uh, address is equal to ct lock.params one. We'll print out those addresses. And then we'll just do uh, param one dot constant. So those are the addresses. And then we'll do. Um, the length is on the third parameter, so we'll do ct, or I think it was, let me double check. Yeah, third, so then we'll do, um, this one's kind of weird because it's getting the length that's passed to the RC4 algorithm, so I'd rather just get it in the mem copy, if that makes sense. So we'll do uh, ct length is the third parameter here. Okay, uh, constant. And then uh, we'll do ct or print. I'll do ct is equal to bb dot read uh, address value ct length, and then we'll do uh, print ct. Okay. So <clears throat> just to kind of show you how much faster this is in Binary Ninja, like I just use the high-level intermediate language to extract 
the first nested parameter here, which is the built-in mem copy. And then I just captured the uh, source address and then the length. So then that let us get the ciphertext for each call to that RC4 decryption function there pretty fast. Um, so then uh, if I want to decrypt this, then I just have to do um, the built-in RC4 stuff for Binary Ninja, which is, um, let's see if I can remember, decode. And then uh, it'll be our buffer and then key and then that'll be our key data there if I remember correctly so looks right and then this will be CT and then we could just use key here instead of uh, hard coding it so it'll be um, I need to decode this hex um, fortunately this is a fixed key so there we go and then we only want um, it looks like it's getting the null byte. So, so there's all the decrypted strings. And then um, let's just add a comment to each of the decrypted ones. So plain text. And then, okay, so we want to set the uh, comment at the call site, the comment being the decrypted string. Okay, so let's do that. Oh, it's because our call site's a reference. So we need a... Uh, Call site dot address maybe. There we go. Um, so then now if we go to each of these um, RC4 decryption locations, that we get a comment. So should I keep just going with Binja or should I just import these strings back into Ida? Um, I need to handle the other weird case. So if we do like else, um, let's just say call site different format and then let's say um, call say dot address 2x and then we need that a format string okay, let's do that again so we need to handle these cases there's gonna be some that um, I don't think we can handle like I mentioned earlier but like these ones we should be able to I'll just have to collect like all the variables preceding um, the calls. So in all these cases, they're uh, null bytes. So that's useful. And then we'll do another check here. So if the uh, if it's is instance ct lock, then we'll have a um, need to get the previous variable assignments because getting like the previous instructions from a call is actually kind of annoying. Um, I don't really know why there's not better helper functions for that, but just trying to see. So like I need to get the function that this resides in so then I can get every basic block um, and then to get the previous instructions. So it's, I might do it a, a different way because this is kind of ghetto. So I know I can do like, so for a given function or a given instruction, Let's do instruction dot, let's do it from HILL, um, current IL instruction. I thought I could get the index from here, but maybe not. Man, I just need to write helper functions so I don't have to redo this all the time. Let's try the, uh, um, all right, whatever, let's do this. I could have sworn I could have done this a different way, but I'll have to check it out later. Okay, so we're going to add all the instructions to an, to a list. And then if the list is, um, then if we find our address of the call, then we want to get enumerate instructions index. We want to get all instructions index minus one, then our instruction two. And then we want to... Uh, return those there might be more than one if the string is really long but I don't think that is the case here because I think if the strings long enough then it's gonna do that mem copy which we're already handling so All right, let's try that and then we'll do the HL call and let's see if this actually runs uh, where is that 32 I forgot the comma 
So we can walk back up the functions and then get the instructions, right? Okay, so we're getting those now. Let me just make sure. And then I'm just gonna have to figure out the endiness again of the uh, keyword returns. Cool, I'm surprised that actually worked. <laughs> or struck up pack, right? Not unpack. And hopefully that's the right byte order. So we'll do CT is equal to bytes. Then we'll add the other keyword. And then we'll do RC4 decode our key. Uh, required argument is not an integer. Um, what are they? <laughs> Let's do our instruction. Oh, these, it's actually the assignment, so we need the. Um, okay, I can just do it down here. Okay, so then we'll do params or uh, operands rather. Uh, one. Uh, operands one and then um, constant, I think. Um, and I'm just going to put in the comments here what this looks like so it's not confusing to me when I look at this in the future. <laughs> I should probably do the same thing with the other type of uh, copy, but okay, let's see if this actually works. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that worked. Except for one of them. Uh, let's print the location of the other one. For some reason, it's not getting the right length, but it's not a big deal. I can fix that. So we'll get the, for those ones, we can get the uh, CT length of the high level intermediate one. So that probably was the better approach earlier, but that's okay. So we'll do the, uh, I don't know, we don't, we know the length. We know the length. Why is there extra bytes? Yeah, okay, let's do what I was gonna do. All right, just to give you guys a heads up, I'm probably going to hop off pretty soon here. Um, but appreciate you all sticking around this long. I think what I'll do next week is just uh, get the config done and then uh, see if we can automate it. Because um, I think this binary is like massive. Um, like we have so, there's so much functionality uh, in the C2 framework. So I don't know like how much we want to scope it to be uh, fully reversed, if you know what I mean. If you guys think it would be better to have like the whole thing reverse, we can do that. And I'll mark up um, all those imports and stuff uh, for next stream as well. But yeah, let me see which one of these isn't working and then um, we can do that. Okay, so call instruction dot operands pt is equal to, I know this looks crazy, but this should work. Subscriptable, there you go. So let's see what uh, this one is that we're not getting. Um, so we'll do prints. So I'll print this out again. And then we'll do um, that. So aren't you being decrypted properly? Hmm. So I'll say uh, ct dot hex. Oh, it's because those are null bytes. So I could probably clean those up a little bit better than the crazy thing that I'm doing now, but that's okay. Okay, so it looks like I'm not encoding uh, this ordering correctly there. So maybe I'll do like, um, try decode ASCII, and then if that doesn't work, then we'll just try it the other way around, and then we'll decrypt it. Then we'll do uh, the same thing here. Two, one, we get rid of the rest of these prints. Okay. So um, we have, uh, I'm just honestly in awe, so take it away. <laughs> How's it going, uh, Ruben Rojas? Okay, so um, just to show you kind of what I just did. Um, these are all like decrypted uh, DLL names. So kind of what I expected earlier, which I, well, why I wasn't really gonna focus too much time on it, but then we went down this rabbit hole, so. Um, so with each call to this RC4 decrypt, there was two separate like formats. Um, this one I still have to do. Um, I think this might be the config or something. Um, but there was the format with the built-in mem copy as a argument. And then there was this format that was taking a keyword followed by a D word. 
Um, oh, so that's why there's null bytes because this is an actual Q word. It's just a D word. So that's why the uh, second variable is being inserted there. So there's probably better ways we could do a few things, but um, okay. So uh, basically I looked at each call site looked for like a certain instruction. So if the, if the parameter was a high level call, then I looked at that. If it was, or then I did the um, high level call format. Oops, let me go back. Um, the high level call format. And then if it was a high level const pointer, meaning there was this integer format, then I did it, uh, this stuff. Uh, and then I packed the keywords in order. So you got the right byte ordering. And then uh, I decrypted them. There's one instance where I didn't get the ordering correctly. So I tried to decode it using ASCII, which wouldn't work if it wasn't valid ASCII bytes. And then I uh, decoded it another way. So uh, this is a way that you can decrypt uh, those strings in BRC4. So let's see, I wanna see if I can find that config before I go. And that can be a good uh, lead into uh, next stream. Cause it's probably, um, here somewhere, or let's check our strings window. I don't have it. Um, that's the base 64 alphabet. Uh, let me get the script window out of the way that we didn't end up using. Yeah, I don't think it says uh, obvious as I thought. Not just like a base 64 blob. What about this? Yeah, so this definitely, this definitely looks like the config initialization. So if I see where this this is being copied. I don't know if this is actually config, so I can change these markups later if this is incorrect. But so again, I'm just going to uh, reset the struct if we can. RTL allocate memory. Okay, I think this is just doing a copy again. It's not plain text, is it? So this pointer is the. Oh man, I wish I could recreate the struct here automatically. So this is like string length. Hmm. Crypt string to binary. Crypt string to binary A. Um, DW flags. There's the third parameter. I just want to see what uh, this is converting. B64. And this is our syscall everywhere. And then this is our B64 string. And A2 is probably the length. Maybe not. Okay. So that's converting a base 64 string and that's called in a bunch of places. Hmm. Okay, RTL allocate memory. Let's see, memory. I think it's just getting the, okay, this will be our RTL allocate memory takes heap, right? Yeah. RTL um, allocate memory, not heap. I think it's undocumented. So byte is equal to 10, 10 is equal to length. And then this is our dest. And then this is our source. And then A3 is um, total. So we have our A2 is our source. And then so this passed as an argument. Um, okay. So uh, this is definitely being called elsewhere. So let me just quickly double check before I stop um, if this had a base 64 segment in it. Yeah, I don't think so. I was just seeing if the uh, config was passed from the uh, earlier stage in base 64. So, okay, um, we could probably write something next stream to extract all these base 64 strings um, as well. There's a few different obfuscation techniques being used here. But this, uh, the ciphertext I still haven't figured out yet. Yeah, I'm gonna resolve these pointers and stuff. Um, we could probably just pick this up next stream. But uh, thanks for sticking around everybody. Appreciate it. Um, I'll put up the notes. Um, this IDB will be available to premium folks um, 
on the Invoke RE training website. So I'm going to run an ad for that one more time, but uh, yeah, this IDB will be up there. Um, I'll continue my markups offline and then, um, well, yeah, write a bunch more stuff for the different obfuscation in this and then hopefully uh, finish off that config stuff. Um, there's just a bunch of these pointers that aren't resolved, so um, it'll take me some time. Yeah, and I'll throw up that code on GitHub for uh, resolving these arguments even though they're just DLLs, but it's still uh, a good reference and interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna throw up that ad one more time. Um, but thanks so much for sticking around. Hey everyone, my name is Joshua Reynolds and welcome to the Invoke RE Introduction to Malware Binary Triage course. Throughout this course, you will learn to triage and reverse engineer malware binaries using a number of proven techniques. These include static analysis, which is the concept of analyzing malware at rest, and dynamic analysis, which is the concept of analyzing malware as it executes. We will also be analyzing network protocols used in malware command and control communications, malware obfuscation, packers and how to unpack them, process injection, how to write effective YAR rules to detect malware variants, and how to compare malware samples at a binary level. This course consists of 11 modules, each containing lectures and practical labs to apply knowledge that you have gained as you complete the course. We provide both video and written materials, so no matter what your learning style is, you can complete the course successfully. Thank you for checking out the course, and we look forward to teaching you.